What's up guys, this episode we're diving into direct uploads with active storage using DigitalOcean Spaces and all of this is going to apply equally to Amazon S3 if you want to use that instead. So what we've got here is a file upload field where we can just upload some screenshots or whatever um, and here we just select those files and then the direct upload JavaScript is going to intercept the form submission. It will look for any of those file uh, fields that are marked as direct upload. It will upload those to the active storage endpoint and then replace in our form, it will insert two hidden fields with the um, signed IDs of those active storage attachments so that our form will be submitted and just receive the IDs and then attach to those already uploaded files. So when we click create post, we'll get progress on these files. You're gonna see them upload and then the form will submit after they have been successfully uploaded. So that is all we're going to implement in this episode, but it is a fair bit of different things because we have to worry about setting up our spaces correctly, our cores config, our JavaScript, and our form, and making sure that of course we have our models set up with active storage. So there's quite a bit to do in this episode, so let's dive in. So I'm gonna walk you through setting up everything from scratch. What we've used here to create our new Rails app is the jumpstart template that I've created before, which installs Devise, Bootstrap, and a few other things just to get us a bare bones application. So I've already run that with the template, and we've got an application here called Direct Uploads. And we need to run Rails Active Storage install because it doesn't include it by default. That might be added in the future. And we can run Rails DB migrate to make sure that we have those active storage migrations run. And then we can generate some sort of model that we're going to use. Um, I'm gonna create a scaffold for this so we can have an easy example. We'll have posts that can have multiple attachments on them. Um, and that will be title body is text. And then we can run Rails DB migrate for these. And if we open up our editor, we'll be able to go into the uh, routes file. We will set the root to posts index. We'll go to the post model. We'll say has many attached files or something like that. So um, this will be our active storage attachments. And then we can go into our post form. We will have a field here. We'll just grab this one. This will be a file field for files. This will be for files as well. And then we'll, we're going to say multiple is true because we want you to be able to upload multiple files. And then we can go into our post controller and accept that where we'll have files, which will be an array of strings. So we'll pass in the signed IDs using the JavaScript. So we'll have that as our Ram and then our post show.html erb. We're going to want to print out those files that have been uploaded. So let's just grab body, say files, and files.each do file. We'll set up to loop through those and we will link to file.file name and then directly to the file. So if you click on it, it will open up that file. You could also say maybe target blank, so it opens up in a new tab if you like, um, but that is up to you. So then we're going to need to go into our storage.yaml and create um, one of these locations so that we can upload files. So what I'm going to do here is name one called spaces, it will be Amazon S3. And instead of using the Rails credentials file, we're just going to use S3 key as an environment variable that I've already set up. And we'll do the same thing for this one. We'll just change it to S3 secret. And then our region is going to be NYC3. Our bucket is going to be called Go Rails. And one last thing we need for DigitalOcean is the uh, endpoint option here, which will be nyc3.digitaloceanspaces.com. And at the beginning here, we want to say HTTPS colon slash slash, so it knows to use SSL for that connection. So that's going to set up our uh, bucket for us, and then we can go into our development environment and say we want to use that spaces 
service so that we can have the, those files uploaded there. Now, we're going to need to include the JavaScript for this. So we're going to open up application.js and then we're going to require the active storage JavaScript here, which you can see we already have in our file. So that active storage JavaScript is going to be what will um, fire off the events for the direct uploads and handle all of that for us. And then that's going to be where we can hook in to insert those file upload um, file names and progress bars so we can see that progress. So this is going to be our first step. You can also require this in Webpacker if you wanted with the NPM package, which you would have to install separately, but this will work um, and work easy enough in the asset pipeline. So we're gonna use that and then we're going to grab some JavaScript and CSS from the active storage documentation for the event listeners and for the CSS of those progress bars. So we're gonna grab this. We're going to just drop it in here and say, let's just require self to keep this simple. Um, you would probably wanna put this in a separate file like they suggest, direct uploads.js. But in our case, um, we're just gonna drop it here and we can take a look at how this works pretty easily. So this direct upload initialize event is going to um, fire on a target and that target will be the file upload field that um, is in your application and marked as direct uploads. So in our case, if we go to the post form, we can go to the file field and we can say direct upload is true. So if we save that and start our Rails app, we can go to the new post form and if we inspect this, that data attribute will have been added for us. So we say direct upload is true. Rails is going to interpret that and say, okay, you actually want the data direct upload URL to be installed. And so this will add the data attribute for us and it will point to the Rails Active Storage Direct Uploads URL. And we can see here it's multiple and the name uh, is post files and square brackets. So it handles multiple correctly. And so then our JavaScript will just be the piece that will make this actually functional. So that JavaScript that we pasted in here is important because this is going to run this whenever it initializes a direct upload. So this initialize event is going to fire for every upload that you added. So the multiple is true is going to fire this as many times as the number of files you chose. Now we're pulling out the target. So that's going to be the file upload field. And then we're going to insert a JSON HTML before it. So what's going to happen is this HTML snippet will be inserted before your file upload field, say 10 times if you uploaded 10 files. And so that's going to insert these so we can have something on the page to show those uploads. Then when they begin starting, we're going to remove the pending class. And that's about all that really happens for that. And we're using this direct upload ID because with this ID, we can reference the correct HTML snippet. So that's really important in your run going to want to make sure you have this ID no matter what, as long as you uh, change the snippet or anything, keep that ID on there. Then um, once there's actual progress, it will go and set up the progress. And basically this is just styling the width of the progress bar. So you can see that here, we're changing that style width in that one. Nothing too fancy. We just need to select the proper element for that upload and then change its width every time it progresses. And then if there's an error in this case, it's going to add um, a red bar around the file upload, which would be the error and you might want to do other things. So you can go ahead and handle that in here. Um, and then the last one is if it's finished, it's just going to add the complete attribute or class to the element. So that's all there really is to that. Now, this is going to work best when we have the associated styles. So we're gonna grab those as well and you can go and modify these just like you might with the JavaScript here. So we're gonna to go to the style sheets, application SCSS, just drop this here at the bottom so we can see that. And then lastly, we need to go and add the AWS SDK S3 gem. This is gonna allow us to generate a token so that we can in our browser upload 
to our bucket correctly. And even if you weren't using direct uploads, you would need this gem so you could actually hit their API and upload the file from the server. So with that, we are almost done, except if we were to try to uh, upload a file now after we install that gem and restart a rail server, if we were to try to do this, we're gonna get an error. And you can see that with the red outline here. And our error says basically 403 forbidden. And we have a cores problem where we get the response to pre-flight request does not pass access control check. And so what's happening is it's saying that the DigitalOcean Spaces domain is not allowed to have this file uploaded to it because it has not accepted files from our domain. And so we have to go into our settings in our cores configuration for our bucket and then set this up. Now, the problem with this is that the origin um, does not allow localhost 3000 currently in DigitalOcean Spaces. So we have to upload a file of XML instead. But if they fix this soon, you'll be able to just go in here and then check off these boxes and click save options and you would be good to go. So this would allow you to go ahead and create this uh, cores configuration so you can get files out of it. You can update files, delete files, create new ones, and also grab uh, just the metadata of the file with the head uh, request. But we're going to have to create this XML file locally on our machine and then upload it to DigitalOcean Spaces because we are not allowed to use this domain, unfortunately, in the browser. So we need to create a cores.xml file. This is what we're going to upload to our space so that DigitalOcean Spaces will actually parse this out and allow these rules. So this is an example here. We have allowed origin localhost 3000. You can add multiple of these. So if you wanted to have your production site as well, like say gorails.com, you could do that. Um, and then you can set your allowed methods and your allowed headers. Now in our case, we're going to want just the say get, put, and post, maybe even head, um, but we don't want our browser to be able to go and delete files from our bucket. So we're going to allow you to put, post, and get files, but we're not going to allow you to delete. Um, and we can then go and install a command called um, brew install s3 cmd. And so if you're on a Mac, you can use this. If you are not, go look at the s3. CMD or S3 command um, installation instructions and install that on your machine. Then you can use S3 command dash dash configure. This command's gonna ask you a bunch of little questions like what's your access key and secret and then it's going to ask you what endpoints you wanna use. This blog post, I'll link in the notes below, just walks you through that. Basically, you wanna give it your access key, your secret. You can leave the default region as the US, it doesn't care about that. Um, the S3 endpoint is where the region gets specified because it says that in the domain. So you're going to want to have your nyc3.digitaloceanspaces.com. Change NYC3 if you're using one of the other locations for spaces. And same thing for the template for the bucket name. Um, you can just specify this, change the NYC3 to your equivalent one, um, or you can leave this all as the defaults for Amazon S3 if that's what you're using. Then um, we can then go to our command line and run this command, S3 command set cores, give it our cores.xml file we just created, point it to our bucket. If we run this, it should upload. I was receiving a 500 error um, as I was recording this, but it was working and uploading that to DigitalOcean Spaces. When it uploads successfully, you should be able to refresh this page and see localhost 3000 here and your allowed methods. And then once that's ready to go, you should be able to test this out and do a file upload. So then we can upload a file. I'm gonna grab a screenshot here. We'll click upload post and that will go and upload and you will see that it gets uploaded successfully. So here you can see a bunch of files that I've uploaded through that. We can go edit post. We can grab another file and then we can go and upload that and it will upload correctly. So all of that is working and it handles everything like we would expect. All these files are going directly from our browser to DigitalOcean Spaces or Amazon S3 and they're not being uploaded to our server and then uploaded again to that service. They're going directly from our browser 
to the third party service, which is why you have to deal with all that cores configuration junk. Um, but that is it, that is all you have to do for this. Um, and the active storage documentation has that really great uh, JavaScript snippet and CSS for those upload progress bars. You're free to edit those as much as you want. They're really, really simple and you can go and make those function however you might like, but the base functionality of showing the progress in all of those files um, is built in there. So you can grab that, paste it in, and then start tweaking it to your heart's content. So that's all there really is to it for direct uploads. It's very, very simple. And then if you ever want to integrate this into your applications, that's all you have to do is the standard setup and then turn on basically direct uploads and add a little bit of JavaScript and CSS to make the form a little prettier. So that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will talk to you in the next one.